to Sci-Tai Tech. In a previous video, I showed you how to make a blinking LED circuit with using a 555 timer and showed you how to change the blink rate with by using different capacitors that have different capacitance. Low capacitance will make an LED blink faster. High capacitance will make an LED blink slower. Now, instead of constantly changing capacitors every time to control your blink rate of an LED, I have an easier way to do this. In this circuit, I'm going to show you how to use the correct capacitor with the right capacitance to have the optimal blink rate of the LED, and we're going to control the LED with using a potentiometer. Let's get started. So I have right here my 555 timer, and I'm going to create this blinking LED circuit the exact same way as I did in a previous video. To see this video, click on the uh, icon card that's on the top right to be able to see how I made that circuit. Otherwise, this circuit is exactly the same way as before, so what I'm going to do is just skip through it, but I'm going to show you where I'm going to make the modification to add the potentiometer. And there you have it. The circuit is now complete. Normally I would put this 470k ohm resistor between pin 6 and 7, and that will make the LED blink. This time what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to add two jumper cables on pin 6 and 7. Now I have placed my jumper cables on pin 6 and 7 in the place of the 470k ohm resistor. And I have right here my 100k ohm potentiometer. We're going to connect that in its place. I'm going to place my potentiometer right here on the edge of the board. And I'm going to connect one jumper cable from pin 6 to the center part of the potentiometer, pin 7 on the other end of the potentiometer, and now the circuit is complete. Let's go power up the circuit by connecting pin 1 to ground and pin 8 to positive. Now power the circuit with 5 volts. And there, your LED is now on. Let's go ahead and turn the potentiometer to control the blink rate of the LED. It's very hard to tell how well it's blinking on camera, again because of the frame rate on the camera is too slow. Let's see how it looks in the dark. Ah, as you can see, from solid to now flashing. But it's really hard to tell how well it's flashing on camera because of the frame rate of the camera is way too slow. Like I said before, you really need to do this in person. It's much more spectacular in person. Now that's all cool and all by using an LED and making an LED flash, but how about we try it with a speaker this time? We can see what the square waves look like now let's see what the square waves sound like. Now let's change the capacitor to have a different sound. Let's use this 104 picofarad capacitor. 
and let's see how that sounds. That sounded really interesting and very annoying, but very cool at the same time. Now let's just see what the LED looks like by using that little 104 picofarad capacitor and see what happens if you use that. Hmm, it doesn't change much. This is why you need to use a slightly bit higher capacitance to have a more interesting flashing LED. A lower capacitance actually works better for the speaker to have a better sound. So there is a difference with using a 1 microfarad compared to a 104 picofarad. Well, anyways, let's just go back to the speaker again. And there you have it, controlling a blink rate of an LED and controlling the square sound waves of a speaker with using a 555 timer and a potentiometer. A good way to make a strobe light and a good way to make an annoying musical device. Thank you for watching SciTai Tech. I hope you learned something new and don't forget to like and subscribe for more SciTai Tech videos. Till the next tech, goodbye.